All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Chuan Yun, and I want to say thanks for taking some time of your day and being my students for a few minutes. Today's lesson is on history, specifically on our country, the United States. I do not have to tell you 2021 was a little of history in the making, both good and bad. We have seen it through a myriad of news agencies. Today's lesson is discussion based, and I hope the conversations we have will turn to something positive, something meaningful. History is fascinating, I, I believe, as it shows society is not perfect. History is not a straight line. Uh, imagine it as well twists and turns and bumps. Of course, there can be moments where we want to imagine some things did not turn out how it happened, but we must accept reality, pretending it otherwise does damage. This past six marked a year since the insurrection. I take everyone here knows some level of this, whether it be a lot or little. As we speak in DC, a commission has been established to investigate what has happened. Uh, while we're not going to the specifics of what we know and do not know, here's a general overview. Uh, from NPR, heard on the segment, All Things Considered, and last update, on December 22nd of 2021. Hundreds of supporters of former President Donald Trump, both through police lines and stormed the US Capitol, forcing a panic evacuation of top political leaders and threatening the country's peaceful transfer of power. The violent attack was an act of domestic terrorism, according to the FBI. Approximately 140 members of law enforcement suffered injuries in the attack, many at the hands of rioters, rooting pepper spray, metal pipes, and American flags, fashion to clubs, those injuries resulted into brain damage and crushed spinal disc. Five people ultimately died during or soon after the riot, although not all their deaths have been directly attributed to the events that day. One woman, Ashley Babbitt, was shot and killed by Capitol Police. More than $1 million of damage was done to the Capitol building. In response to its head, Department of Justice has launched what has become the largest criminal investigation in American history, involving scores of federal investigators and prosecutors across the country. Okay, so please open your chat now. You should see I posted a series of questions in, in advance. Uh, so you should have time to think about them. Pick one you'd like to answer, uh, and when speaking, it would help to say one number you picked as well. Um, I picked question two. And I remember on that day, I had a conversation with my mom where she was feeling really nervous about the state of the presidency and felt like something bad might happen before Biden was inaugurated. And I remember feeling really excited that we were getting a new president. And obviously we couldn't have predicted what would happen later that day. Thank you, Libby. Work. I mean, I actually had similar feelings. Um, I mean, if something like this was gonna happen to stop uh, this vote from happening, then I was kind of worried about what would happen on inauguration day and how they would have security and measurements in place to stop anything from happening. That was, those are some of my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Warwick. Samantha? Yeah, I also uh, answered question two. So uh, I remember on January 6th, I was working and I couldn't really, I didn't have the time to stop and process what was happening. I just kind of had to keep working and pretend like the fact that such an act of like domestic terrorism mm -hmm. didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. Great responses. I now want to talk to you about the news. Uh, it should be accepted universally. Misinformation about the election contributed to January 6th. News coverage on breaking events is often incomplete and may include information that's later discounted. Uh, this leads to the final point discussion, which is primary and secondary sources. I take it everyone here knows what primary and secondary sources are. Uh, say that, um, can someone give me an example of each and it does not have to relate to the insurrection? Yeah, work. A primary source could be like, if we were taking the American independence uh, sheet, that would be our direct, our primary source. And then anything commenting or having an opinion about that in like an article would be a secondary source. Yeah, very good, very good. So essentially primary sources are like what work has been saying, uh, original work where secondary sources synthesize, summarize, and or interpret the primary. So how the insurrection is portrayed out currently and how it would be interpreted years from now is concerning, uh, very concerning. We are in a very strange time now where people will argue over facts, debating what's true and what is not. Uh, so connecting everything we have learned uh, what would transcripts, recordings from that day fall under? Would that be primary or secondary? 
primary. Okay, okay. Uh, now, how about the political analysis um, analyses from that day and shortly after? Secondary. Okay. Uh, last one. Uh, how about uh, former President Trump's uh, Save America March speech? Would that be primary? Yes. Yes, that would be primary. All right. So very good, everyone. So um, the final thing that I want to um, go through, just so I can be we should what I taught you was understood, is doing academic too. And so here's where I wish I was a good singer, but it goes like this. So a second time around, um, you will join in. Uh, it goes, primary sources of PSA say where secondary sources might sway. So primary sources. Primary sources. A PSA say. Appears they say. Where secondary sources might sway. Where, where secondary sources where might sway. So I think you get a gold star, living you get silver, and then well, you get bronze. So <laughs> that's it. That's my lesson today. I hope we made it. So thank you, everybody. I'm just going to end the recording there.